All right, welcome back to the <laughs> the wiring loom of the MG928 Porsche. Today we are going to make the bold move of, despite all this, putting 12 volts on there. I haven't touched it yet. Not quite game. I'm going to get Matt to check my work. What have we connected? No high voltage stuff. There's no high voltage battery. I just want to check that we can get 12 volts going without any short circuits. No smoke, no flames. That's the plan. We've got earths everywhere. Earths, earths, here, there, everywhere. And we should be able to find the key there and then push the start button and have the dash light up. That's all I want to achieve. I just want to see this lighting up and some error messages telling us what it's missing. That would be a really good achievement. These can just hang, there's, there's nothing connected to them, that's fine. It'll be one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. That's a totally original quote, I just came up with that. I've said before the biggest milestone in this project is getting to a point where we can push the accelerator and the wheels go round. To me, that is the summit of our Everest. Sure, it'll be a long road down the mountain to completion back at base camp, but it's downhill. First, we've got to get up there. To do that, we need the high voltage battery and all that orange heavy duty wiring. But before we can add that, we need the low voltage loom, all the 12 volt stuff up and working. Now there's enormous complexity in any modern car, particularly in the messages flying back and forth between all of the electronic modules. Even though this is just a cheap Chinese EV, there are literally dozens of modules in the car chatting away to each other. He wants to select drive. Can I do that? Asks the SDU. And one by one they answer. No, he can't. There isn't any brake vacuum. No, he can't. The bonnet's open. No, he can't. The charging cable's still connected. No, he can't. The battery cell temperatures are out of balance. Whatever. You get the idea. The main reason I decided to use the entire MG Loom is that I don't have to understand the details of all these messages. I just have to know they're happening. Now, we're actually not using all the modules in the car, but do we have enough for the car to actually work? And that's where Matt's diagnostic tool comes in, to look at these messages and help us chase down problems. So let's do a deep scan to see if we're ready to start adding back the high voltage stuff. So it's on 10 amp setting there. So if you just want to check between here and the terminal and just check we're not getting... We could hear something power something, on then. Something clicked. Ready? Listen. That's There's good. something in there, so we got... What sort of current? Uh, 2.93 amps. That's probably perfect, isn't it? Yeah, so we're not, we don't have a deadhead somewhere. Okay, ready? Uh, well, let's put the terminal on then, shall yeah. we? There's no any screen? Any? No, not yet. I'll just undo it once. See if anything comes on the dash. Nothing. Couple of clicks. But if I unlock the car, well, we've no. got no door locks that's going to make a load. So yeah, ready? Yeah, give it a go. No, a whole lot of nothing. It has moved off three point three. No. Oh well, it was a nice try. So ready? We'll connect it up. Yep. And unlock and lock. Yeah. No, what no. does that go to? That's the crash module. That's the one that says to disconnect the high voltage battery. Gotcha. This, this one and that one. They're yep. the, and we found that if you disconnected both of them, it didn't affect the car at all. The car would still work drive. Uh, power steering. Yep. You know, things like this, I don't know if they're for the tail lights or... Oh yeah, that whole assembly is in the very back of the car. Yep. See, that just did something then. Um, what have we not got plugged in? I think the important thing is the driver's door, which is this one. All the electronics in the driver's door in the door handle. Yep. I was worried that there may be something crucial in there. Sure. It's that one for us, OBD. Yes, your OBD. Um, that wouldn't be showing anything, I suppose, would it? Probably not. Um, no, no, without plug it in and see if it's got power. If it's got power, that's good. It'd be hard because I have like every code known to man probably in there. Yeah, yeah. So we've got nothing at all. No. I think I think I need to get the, the driver's door electronics out of the door. Just out of interest. Just stretch this up to earth this, will you? It's a bit of a stretch. I need to. Oh, oh that's good. Maybe we do need that one. I think we should be connecting it all. Yeah, yeah, okay. A few moments later. No. Let's try ignition or Well that's the, that's the start stop. Oh, oh. oh we've got the screen. We've got a green light on. We got a screen. We do need that one. Yeah. 
set up. Okay. All right. I think we can safely say we haven't shorted anything out big time. No dash though. Interesting. Obviously more earths needed. Yep. Okay, I'm glad we got something. And look, the aircon thinks it's working. Yep. But it's not, of course. We'll turn it off. Okay, power down. Stop cameras. I've got more work to do. A few minutes later. Okay, Matt, take two. I've done a few little changes. I've added another. There's another earth down here I've, yep. I've put on. Let's give it some voltage. Ready for smoke? Ready for the noise. <gasps> Look. We got the dash working. That's good. Airbag fault, consult handbook. So the flashing, that means the main's disconnected, that flashing. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. That's saying there's no high voltage. Yep. Um, That's state good. of charge low, please charge. Yep. Vehicle control system fault. Look, it's gone straight to neutral. I didn't push the start button or anything. It's gone yeah. straight to thinks we're driving. Neutral. Look at this. Reverse. Went to oh, reverse. Yeah, wow. And there's our reversing camera. Yep. Neutral. Drive. And it actually thinks we're ready to drive. Yeah. I, What's it like when I put the brakes? Any change? Oh, no, hold on. That's... Uh, that's yeah, brake that's on. More, that's brake yeah. on. Gotcha. And, you, and you push it to have brake so off. So if I push that now, you go for reverse. Oh, yeah, nothing. It doesn't yeah. go to reverse. Yeah. Whereas if you t let, let the button go, it thinks your foot's on the brake. Yeah. And now it'll go to there reverse. You go. There you yeah. go. Huh. That's good. This, and here's our diagnostic messages. Airbag fault, electronic park brake system fault, state of charge low. Well, it hasn't got a battery, that's why. Heel hold, front camera system fault, RDA, that's the radar system fault. Vacuum fault, because we haven't got any brake accumulator. But how good is that? It works. Curse level one, two, and three. It's a Formula One car. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and drive mode, mode. There we are. Sport mode, normal mode, eco mode. How fantastic is yeah. that? Battery. It says we've got nine hundred ninety-nine kilometres range. When it was new, it only had like three fifty. Wonder if it thinks the doors open. Is there any door open lights on there? Because sometimes when doors are open, you can't get out of park, or it only has park. I think once again they've taken an optimistic view and said if yeah. we don't get a sensor from the doors, they're all closed. Yeah, that's good. The Chinese seem to have adopted the approach that if something's missing or broken, we've got to still get you home. That's it. So that's... it doesn't shut the car down. It just says, okay, we haven't got any brakes or anything, but we'll still keep going, you know. Smart. If it was Japanese or German, it wouldn't do that, would it? It'd go, nope, there's a fault for you. are not going anywhere. That's definitely German. It's minus 40 degrees C outside, and we're just wearing t-shirts and jackets, that's pretty good. And it's got GPS signal. Yeah, wow. Well, and it knows where we are. Good. I don't understand why the start-stop button isn't working, because it's just defaulted to start. As soon as we connected the battery, we're going. Normally, the car's locked, and you have to at least push unlock mm -hmm. to, you'd get a green light, when you press it the first time and then you hold it and put your foot on the brake mm. and th only then can you select drive yeah but the car seems to have gone straight to a mode where yeah we can it thinks we're driving it's bizarre it's it's good that it's taking a very optimistic view of driving it's funny how it says odo error yeah we so, did have an we've so, lost the odometer it was thirty two thousand k's before so usually i think odometers are usually stored in these really in some cars they're in the abs module but What's not plugged in? It knows we've been messing with it. This key seems to be completely superfluous now. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. Normally you'd, you'd switch the car off. You yeah. go, it's power off. He goes, nah, you're still going. I reckon it's got something to do with the main battery. But anyway, we, we're never going to get it running till the battery's connected. We could put the OBD2 on it as yeah. well. Yep, definitely and see. And see what codes What's, it's coming up with. At least it's, it's on, you know? And now it's just fine tuning and Nothing, nothing blew up. We barely touched that now. <laughs> Something's not roasting, which is good. I'm sure once you get all the rest plugged in, we'll be good. You know what I mean? You're like the Chinese. You've got a very optimistic Do view of things. Do we have the door locks? They're all still in the doors. Yep. I have a feeling. It's letting us drive, so it must think they're closed, but it may need that circuit working for the locking. Yep. The fact that you press that and, you press and, and nothing and happens. Nothing, because it's got our... 
is it keyless entry? You can put your hand yes. on. Yes, it's like having a house alarm system where it says, oh, there's a fault with the alarm. Mm. I'll just open all the windows and doors and fling them wide open. Yeah, you know. that's right. Do you want to steal me? Just disconnect things, away you go. Yeah, it's all good now. Current speed zero. See, even this steering column angle, it's not plugged in. No. The whole... It may need that for something else, well, do you know what I mean? That's something we can't readily do, because no. that's that's a massive big unit that clamps around here. I understand, but it's electronically plugged in. It's yeah. like this, we're not using it, but okay. it needs to be electronically plugged in. Okay. Or we've got nothing. Because this is a, a safety thing, mm. I know nothing makes sense, because mm. the whole, that module's disconnected, but it may just go, oh, I do need this plugged in. It's like this, I must have you in the circuit. Yeah. I think if we see what can sort of make error messages we have like what actual communication to go mm. yeah we're going to have airbag open circuit mm. but it's not so much a can code where it's going hey if my abs module is not talking to anything that's talking to it mm. it's we need to look at communication going uh information missing from whatever is not plugged in that it needs on that network and then we go we'll just plug that in try and get rid of all the can messages mm. i think that's important mm -hmm. hey is are we getting a throttle recognition you know, is our brake switch being recognized, which we can see all through the OBD port. This is being seen. Are we seeing this in the scan tool? Yep. It's pretty pleasing so far though, isn't it's it? It's brilliant. I can't believe it's... Is it talking? Yep. Do a scan. So it's found the VIN number. It doesn't think it's a Porsche yet. Not yet, so we'll go smart scan. Matt, as usual, is spot on. It's not so much about all the modules showing faults, shown here in red. It's the greyed out modules that aren't talking at all. You have to think of these cars as sort of like a committee meeting with 20 people, each with different skills and responsibilities. If one dude says, hey, I've got a problem, you can try and fix it. But if a key guy is fast asleep, you don't know what you have to do or where even to start. Most important is the BCM, the body control module, which is fast asleep. So I need to do a better job with the wiring and wake him up. What a great tool. How long is it going to take to go through all of those? Well, this is the last one. 83, about 100 errors. Uh, one eternity later. VIN mismatch with body control module instrument pack. Ooh. So that's probably definitely not a good sign. No. So a VIN mismatch. Well, if it can't see the BCM, then it can't get a VIN. True, that's right, mismatch. We bumped something, and now things are working. This is the body control module. It, it wasn't, even though it was getting voltage. Yes, it's got voltage. These lights suddenly came on. The odometer's back. We're showing 32,000 Ks. And we've got now got a light on this that we didn't have before. Start. So oh, I just turned it off. I held the start button in and turned it off, sorry. I shouldn't have touched anything, should I? But you've just killed the dash, so maybe press and hold the ignition again, that button, start button. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Dash is dead. So okay. maybe it is working, but, or double press it. Maybe foot on brake. So what seems to have happened now, the BCM has jolted awake, realized the last time I powered the car off, it was still driving. It's seen a hundred faults with all the other nitwits on the committee, Gone, what the fridge magnet? You can't drive a car like that and shut the whole thing down. But at least it's talking, so that's progress. So we've got a lot more green now, which is good. So they were just history codes. I believe the key talks to the PDPS, the yep. passive entry, passive security module. Sure. Uh, not the column lock, but anyway. Look, I don't know, but I'm just telling you what it's unhappy with. Gotcha. So, yeah, the column lock, so it's got no communication, and I dare say, could that be something to do with the odometer? You wouldn't think so, but Might. no one had done. Yeah. Who do we ask? We don't know, so. Yeah. Inhibit, regen, and creep. Brake pedal position. Yep. It's funny how many codes the brake switch is not happy with. Charge a positive temperature sensor circuit short. The battery will open pin. 2,000 years later. Well, even at the battery level, there might be like an extra wire that's not on that could feed the BCM or something. Are you doubting me? Not at all. <laughs> I'm doubting myself because I don't even know what any of this is. <laughs> Here we go. 
power. There's a whole lot of relays going click. We've got a whole lot more things working now. Overhead console. Dash is booting okay. We can even select reverse. Yep, and the reversing camera seems to work. And the reason was we had one slightly wonky earth just here. So I've, I've sanded that back a bit more and it seems to be working. So what if we short this to earth? Does the horn work? Oh, absolutely. Okay, the question is, if we had the high voltage stuff connected, would we be driving? Push the accelerator. Run, 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 run. Make it sound like an old-fashioned tabulator. Yeah. Make it make it look like it's doing something. Yeah, that's it. MG. It found my VIN. Look, I'll spare you the whole gory process, but everybody in the car is more or less talking now. We only have about 76 volts, and I think very few of them would actually stop the electric motor from turning. A few committee members are still at home. The onboard charger is not connected. The BMS is still in the battery pack. The SDM crash module is a real party pooper that can't get over the fact the car was once crashed and we know we don't need him anyway. The other modules, I'm pretty sure we don't need to get the wheels turning. Power steering, the telematics box that tells MG back in Shanghai what nonsense we're up to. The rest is looking okay. So we're getting close to reattaching the high voltage battery and the BMS. Now you know I have to repackage the whole battery in the front, but before I do that, I think we should just be smart and take it as it is a working lump, put the car on the hoist, hang the battery underneath and light her up. To do that, we'll need some high voltage wiring. Let's talk briefly about the, the flow of electrons in the high voltage stuff. Now I've just roughly put that there and we'll worry about how the cover plate attaches later. Obviously that needs a nice dress plate to make it look prettier, but they're sitting fairly proud so we'll have to work hard to, we might have to shave these down a bit to, to get that nice and flush. From there, the charge leads come round. There's just an earth here. And they'll come up through here somewhere too. So charge coming in here. These two go back to the motor via the inverter. So that's DC going back to the motor. These three go to the battery. Now they won't just go up and through that um, hole in the tunnel. They'll we'll drill three nice holes there and put appropriate grommets. But that's basically where that box is going to live. I previously thought it'd be over, over there, but this is a much better spot. Something like that. So it's really quite simple, except that in the MG, all these things were very close together. The battery, the inverter, and this charge box were all, you know, very short lead runs. They're now quite long. This is over two meters. That's almost two meters going back to the inverter. So, what we've done is we've gone to a thicker size cable. These are 50 square millimeter cables rather than the 35s that used to have. That's just to minimize any losses we might have. So this, as you can see, is our little high voltage corner. We'll make a nice frame for that. It'll sit beautifully down there. On top of it, we'll take this basic frame that came out of the MG and we'll modify it so it sits nice and low just above the top of that. And that will be the mount for this guy, our DC to DC converter takes the 400 volts and turns it back to 12. That'll just sit there. And on top of that will be this bad boy. That's the charger that takes the 240 volts when we're charging and manages the, the sending of that to the battery. So yeah, we'll get this all down a bit lower and further over. We'll remove that and this should be a fantastic. And that's basically all the high voltage stuff done. Wow, I'm starting to get excited. Oh hey, you made it right through to the end of the video. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please share it with your motoring friends. And above all, click the little subscribe thing down here so you can see the latest videos when we bring them out, hopefully each week. I look forward to seeing you soon.